everybody and welcome to my drawing video so let's start off with a little bit of narration and back up so as I'm doing this sketch and we're speeding through this obviously as you can see what I tossed aside was a working sketch which talks about all the fundamental stuff that you need basically functions what's supposed to move where the main things are supposed to be so like wings how they gyrate, where cannon's supposed to be, stuff like that. And this helps with the uh, final artistic version of this. And in the very first frame, if you go all the way back, you can see that I was practicing on hexagons and other shapes like that, just to uh, get used to it because it's what the uh, client wanted. So as you can see here, I start off with some very basic sort of shapes for the upper body and lower body and I start getting some of the generalization of the gears here and where the wings are going to be. I sketch them out first, put the skeletal structures where they're supposed to be, that way if I need to change them later I only need to erase a little bit of stuff. I don't really get too much into detail here. Draw basic surfaces, three dimensions of where things are supposed to be, but nothing too in-depth. Maybe mark where windows are supposed to be and railings. <coughs> Right here you can see me drawing tubes and the inner workings, kind of like uh, transportation buses. You ever watch, uh, or you, if anyone's from Chicago, they'll see the uh, CTA buses that are the really long ones. We call them caterpillar buses. Those. Working the legs here. Add some wings. And the client was looking for a sort of steampunk look. Steampunk automaton dragons. So I was like, okay, let's try this. And it's supposed to be an airship type dragon, so it's sort of like a plane that flies with its wings. Magic. It just works. <coughs> so as you can see here, I start to draw sails on it, at least the skeletal parts. And start to fill them in, that way if it is to fly, it can stay steady. And everything that would normally be filled in with the wings or the uh, what I want to call uh, membrane, that's actually going to be made out of leather when we do this. So let's draw some windows on the side because airships, people need to see where they're going out the sides if you have passengers. <coughs> draw a cockpit slash dock at the very top so people can climb out and see pilot things, shoot stuff, and the arrow I drew there is meant for uh, wind direction. So we're going to start drawing the cannons on right now. Happy little cannons right there, little artillery shells. We're going to draw another cannon there, because every cannon needs a friend. So we're going to start filling in the little posts and sails here. Make sure everything's covered. So nothing too detailed, just general outlines, just to make sure all the functionality is here. And then we start adding in more detail as we start going along, in case we need to change anything. So I added some bracing bars in case, obviously, if something flies into the windows, that if you're to come to a sudden stop, you won't go flying out of the ship. Basic safety protocol. I don't know much about airships, but I'm pretty sure you don't want people falling out of them. So now we're going to start inking it. And we're going to start off with the head, which honestly I shouldn't have started off with, but I decided to just say, fuck it, let's start off with the head. So, as you can see, I don't like to fill in bold immediately. I press down kind of hard because that's just how I draw, that's my style. And I'll do all the bold filling a little bit later, and I'll accent it with a color. So basically this just becomes a whole tracing routine. Just draw the railings, fill in little details here with a pen that I didn't do in pencil. And just make sure everything looks nice with the line work. Because if I can't color, at least my line work will look nice. We're going to fill in some of those joints, and we're going to make sure we cover the vents as well. The gears too, make sure all that's in, 
and this is where we start getting the really fine detail to make sure that the gears, the pipes, all the little intricate pieces that make this steampunk thing uh, actually look steampunk are going to be done in the line work. All the gears and the edges to those are going to be done rather than being filled in with pencil I now do them here to make them look their best and then obviously when I color them. All the little tethers, cables, and the railings. Everything gets filled in on this stage. This is the detailing part. Hmm. And I'm looking back in this drawing, or at least the video of this drawing, and I really do skip around a lot. Because normally I outline the whole thing and then I start. But I guess I'm doing everything very detailed, and once the detail is all done, I move on to the next. So with these sails and most of the leather work from here on out, ooh, that is some nice uh, lining I did there. I like to draw tears, stitches, things like that, where you can see that there's weathering and repair that is needed, because this ship is supposed to be rather old. At least that was the background that was given. And so if this ship is rather old, it's leather being used as its sails, and if it has cannons, it's obviously going to be in fights. So which means that it's going to take damage over time and I need to show that. I need to show its age. I need to show basically that this airship has been through a lot. <clears throat> so you can see I start filling it in and make sure to emphasize the spines where the wings are being held, sort of like the ligaments. No, ligaments isn't the word. The skeletal structure. But instead of calcium it's brass and copper. I was also told to reference songbirds and to give it that sort of look hence the leathery torn up old sort of look. If you know anything about Battleshock Infinite you'll understand how old the songbird looks because the songbird is fucking old. So as you can see here I make sure to emphasize that they're stretching around the skeletal structure and maybe even some ripping over time. And if it's going to rip, it's going to be ripping where you stretch it, which is where it wraps around, or at least pressure applies to the skeletal structure. Back here, I just have a normal little leather spaded tail, or whatever kind of tail you want to call that, at the tip of that. And that's just for balancing reasons, to look aesthetic more like a dragon. And so I like to erase all my lines, obviously, because I don't like my colors getting uh, mixed in with the graphite. I think it looks sloppy. If any of those artists out there who like their graphite to add that color, I mean, that's your thing. I ain't judging. So, when I mentioned in the beginning that I was doing a lot of practicing on the hexagon, it's because the scales and the lining of the ship are supposed to be hexagonal, and this is where that detail comes out in the wings. Now, on the body, the hexagon plates will be so blended well or well blended together that they won't really show out as large hexagon, hexagon. So I just decided to just do some dots just to make it sure it looks a little like rough but still shiny. And the shiny will come out in the um, what do you call it? The coloring phase. So I decided to fill in the wings so that they can at least see that there's a major hexagonal part because the wings are supposed to be very thick, large, and be built with very large uh, hexagonal pieces or scales quote. And as we go further into skinnier and skinnier wings, obviously the parts are going to get smaller and more intricate as they go down the line. And because they're further away in the back perspective, you make them smaller. Awkward silence, as I was probably changing uh, episodes or music on my Xbox. So right here we're going to start this coloring phase. And right here, this is a nice blackish iron, sort of a uh, very dull and matte pieces of steel or iron that hold this thing together. And this is just for the uh, overhangs. The cables and stuff like that that hold it together, I'm going to make out of a sort of rubber. So I decided to color it a normal rubber color. Which is black for people who don't know about oil. 
So right here you can see me looking up references because honestly I've never drawn brass before. And so everyone out there, references are good. Don't be ashamed to use them. So I decided to avoid that because I realized I don't know anything about drawing brass. So let's make this the last thing I draw. So I start coloring in the windows for like the uh, a phantasmal sort of glow. And I sort of got my inspiration off the Big Daddies from uh, uh, Bioshock and the Songbird Eyes. So I do a little mix of the two there. So now I'm on to the brass. And... At first I wanted to go shiny, but then I realized, hey, this thing's been pretty old and beaten up as the wings start to show. So let's cover the base layer with the shiny and then dirty up, dirty it up a bit. The white uh, color pencil, if you use that to blend, actually makes it a little bit more dull. Doesn't make it shine as much. So I start coloring in the horns, sort of a darker brass. Although I should have bolted them. That was my one mistake in all this. But, I mean, it look cool, so I'm not going to complain. So we're going to do the head here, make sure all the shading's right. And the mouth is supposed to open. So I figure that has a lot of tracks. It usually lands into the floor, so we got to make that a little bit dirtier than the rest. But once again, go over with the white color pencil, delve it out. I don't want my colors to be too vibrant. And the green is for acidic, um, what do you call it? Acidic aging. We're going to add some black color pencil in there just to rub some dirt on it. We're going to fill in that background because I realize there's no reason in making it dark. If it's super bright outside, looking inside of something that's shaded, the contrast is so much higher with your natural eyes. So we're going to fill all those in, make them dirty, the usual, put some age on it, rub some dirt on it. This is where I start deciding I shouldn't make it shiny at first. I should start with the dirt first. Put some more acidic aging with that green. And we're going to give it some shine at the very top. Because I know, at least on the very, very top, this is where people can polish it off and, you know, clean it. And maintain it rather than parking it somewhere and cleaning it top to bottom. Because I don't know any crew that wants to do that. So we're working on the back tail coloring in these gears and these gears are supposed to be a very vibrant and gold color because they're always oiled and they're always needing to be cleaned so I know the movable parts have to be at least somewhat shiny because if they're too grimy and old well your thing won't fly and I guess that means the other group's gonna win so start off with some dirt on the non-movable parts on the scales and we start to make it shiny and where else adding less detail is where I wanted to make the highlight of so if anyone knows anything about lighting, highlight refers to both makeup and artistry. Basically, make it shiny, make it stand out, and that would sort of emphasize the light that hits it. So here, I start with the leather, and I like dark tans, and when I checked out the songbird, it had very dark tans on the leather, if you know anything about tanning leather. So we're going to start off with graham crackers. So we're going to start off with a very uh, sort of dark shading base just to, know, just to make sure I know where all the shading is going to start. And we're just going to fill it in with a very dark brown. Very mute color. And then we're going to add some life to it with a light brown. And a normal brown. And then do the highlights with a light brown. Sort of the body that still stays somewhat new. And for anyone wondering out there, I use Crayola student grade uh, color pencils, nothing fancy. Like, six dollar pack, you could probably get some somewhere. Nothing fancy at all. And so I start doing the same exact thing to the wings, which is the very dark brown for the shading, then brown for the base, and then highlighting in the middle sections with the, what do you call it, light brown. So here you can see what I what I call solvent blending, well, not what I call, but what's known as solvent blending. Basically, I'm using alcohol and a Q-tip. Um, paint thinner works, and paint brushes are actually a much better result. But I'm cheap, so I'm using great value uh, rubbing alcohol. And what you do is with the Q-tip, you just kind of swab over, swab over all these pieces, and it gives it this sort of blended technique that looks almost like you watercolored it in, and it makes everything go over so much smoother. 
So if you need like your browns and other darker browns and lighter browns to start working together, that's the thing you use. So here you can see me sketching what pencil, just where these clouds are supposed to go. Now this is my first time doing cloud backgrounds, like how you're supposed to. And I've come to hate it still. And so you can see me pressing in very hard because I'm going to blend all of this in. So this is all the sky blue, and if you see me stopping and making very hard marks, this is to mark where the clouds will be. All the white space, which is why I hate skies, um, you draw clouds using white space, which is what's referred to as you color everything except what you want the clouds. So the clouds, you leave completely blank, there's no color pencil on them until you do the shading. And then you come in with the uh, solvent, and I start blending everything together to make it look smooth and natural and it blurs it out a little and I want it to be blurry on the sole fact that there's motion. Remember that arrow I drew earlier that said this uh, the wind is going from front to back because the ship is in motion? This is why. So if I am to color hard and make line marks I want them going in that direction. Just watching this makes me angry. Like, oh, I hate, I hate drawing clouds. They're so stupid. Anyone who likes clouds, oh, torn to paper. Anyone out there who likes clouds, like, how can you enjoy drawing them? You, it's like you have to have everything perfect with them or they don't look like clouds. Like, even looking back at my own drawing, these don't look like clouds to me. So as you can see, there's a little tear in the paper. That's the only bad part about uh, rubbing with the Q-tips and alcohol is that if you know anything about wet paper, wet paper starts to weaken. Well, it gets weaker when it's wet. You have a chance of tearing it. And that's what I accidentally did. So I go over with some grays to mark what the shaded spots are going to be. And then I just uh, do the rubbing alcohol to basically fake some shadows. That's what this drawing is all about. This drawing is all about faking it. Because honestly, I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing at this point. I watched the tutorial and I'll probably link it in the description of the guy who showed me or who I watched this tutorial on how to draw clouds he did a way better job than I did on here I'm missing some layers I'm supposed to actually have a lot more color pencil on it but at this point this background is just frustrating me so I decide play some Xbox sign my paper and then go back and retouch it a little bit which you'll see me do in a second Because there's some spots I missed and I realized maybe this does need a, a few touch-ups with the color pencil for proper blending. So as you can see it starts to look a little bit better. Just want to say thank you for watching. This is the final piece and as you can see it is looking much better due to scanner. And like and subscribe. And I guarantee the other videos won't be as long as this one. I'm trying to make them shorter. Thanks for watching.